They go after the baddest of the bad. We're talking about the IMPD Violent Crime Unit. Many of the criminals are accused killers, but the unit is also trying to stop murders before they happen. RTV6 reporter Jack Reinhardt got special access to the crime fighting unit, and he found how police are using science and data driven technology to get the job done. Some of our risk, we know they've got cameras. Uh, that's one of the things we're going there for. This is an evidentiary warrant referenced at murder. The IMPD Violent Crime Unit briefing before heading into one of the city's most violent neighborhoods. There is a high probability that there is equipment, video equipment at this residence that may have captured uh, part of or all of the uh, murder that occurred about a week ago. Now in its sixth full year, the violent crime unit has made upwards of 2,000 arrests, the overwhelming majority of suspects wanted for murder. The unit specializes in criminal tracking, surveillance, and locating the perpetrators of violence in Indianapolis. Police department! Homicide investigators identified Sean Wilson as the trigger man in the murder of a pizza delivery driver. The violent crime unit got the assignment of bringing him in. He told me he was going to turn himself in. Now, we've been told that before, and we're kind of 50-50 on it. Um, but some told me I knew he wasn't going to turn himself in. So. The search took four days. It included traffic stops, home visits to Wilson's family members, and known associates. The, the thing is, is, is he's one for serious crime. He's one for murder. Wilson's two-week run from police ended with his arrest at a home in the city's far southwest side. The unit recovered a handgun believed used in the murder, a quantity of methamphetamine, and a stolen pickup truck. It makes us feel real good to get him off the streets before he does something else. Metro police have become more proactive than reactive to violence in Indianapolis. Crime analysts studied every non-fatal shooting over a two-year period. Last year alone, the city recorded slightly more than one non-fatal shooting a day. 46% of the victims refused to cooperate with police. The overwhelming majority of victims were black males, and the overwhelming number of victims were young, 15 to 34 years of age. This week's suspect is going to be next week's victim. And we're trying to come up with some very innovative ways to break into that and try to stop the cycle. Police blame 1% of the Indianapolis population for more than 50% of the city's crime. And so police have embarked on a mission to not only try and predict, but prevent violent crime by analyzing criminal histories, relationships between victims and suspects, and the likelihood they will reoffend again. When we look at high crime areas, we look at, you know, who's on probation, who's on parole. Um, you know, we'll look at who are our, our frequent flyers that are involved in a lot of the, um, you know, disorder that's going on or crime in the, in the neighborhood, and we'll pay those folks a visit. The violent crime unit has stepped up the pressure, utilizing multi-agencies to target the city's most troubled zip codes for up to 24 hours at a time. Police say it shows the public that the department has engaged the community's high crime areas and gets results. We we are uh, working long hours, we are putting people into jail, we are preventing a lot of things from happening. The police admit they can't stop every murder or shooting, but police say they won't let that stop them from trying. In Indianapolis, Jack Reinhardt, RTV6. Now the city maintains a list of the top 200 offenders, individuals considered to be the most dangerous and hardened criminals in the city. It's maintained under the strictest federal oversight to avoid accusations of profiling, and it is considered a go-to list to include or eliminate suspects when police begin an investigation into violent crime.